Hey, welcome back to Phoenix Fab. I'm Mason, and uh, I just wanted to thank you for coming back today. So today, I figured we're gonna work on getting the front end apart because if I can get that done today, then on Friday, we can get the transmission out and we're that much closer to starting on restoring the car. And that's, I'm just so excited to do. So before I delay any further, let's jump right into it. And uh, I wanna get you focused on the car because I ran into a unique problem that a lot of people don't think about. They get the car up in the air and then they're like, oh. All right, so let me show you. Okay, so to get this front end apart, and get the axle out, you have to take the axle nut out before you get the car off the ground. If you mess up and get the car off the ground and then try to remove that axle nut, you messed up. Let me show you what happens. Even now that the engine is out, it still doesn't want to come off with just a normal breaker bar and kind of should. So let me show you what happens. Look at that. I'm just spinning, spinning the tire. And obviously I can't get enough torsion on it, torque on it to uh, get it to come off. So what else do you do? Well, you call your dad who has an impact gun and you get these off with no problem. Let me show you. All right, so now I've got my half inch impact gun and I have it uh, set to 140 pounds, and we're gonna try and get this off. Let's see how it goes. All right, so now with the car up in the air, let's get this wheel off. All right, so I got the wheel off and I am pretty much ready to start disassembling the front end. Now, since we're only going after the transmission, I only need to get the axle out of here. So I'm gonna disconnect the brake caliper. I'm going to disconnect the strut. And from that point, it should allow this whole system to drop down far enough where I should be able to weasel the front caliper off of the actual axle and then slide the axle out. Then I'm going to reassemble everything back to pretty much how it sits now, minus the axle, so that I can still roll it around the, gra the garage because I, I don't want it to be you know, stuck here for right now. So that's what I'm going to jump into right now. And we will talk about this when I'm done because I've got some really cool upgrades that we're going to be talking about on what I'm doing to this car. So let's see how this goes. That's it. It's 
pretty simple job. It's really not that bad. So now I'm gonna reassemble everything and uh, yeah, this side's done. I'll go to the other side, get that side done. We'll have to get the drive shaft out and this whole, uh, this whole project will be done. I'll be able to take the transmission out. All right, so let's go over the plan for the car. This was my first one and we're gonna do a lot of the same things except better. Now, the first one's engine bay was a little bit rough, but the rest of the car was extremely clean. I started by removing all the sound insulation off the floor using dry ice, which is pretty nifty. I sanded down the interior and primed it with a 2K primer to seal it off. After that, I used this stuff called lizard skin. It was supposed to cool down the interior and make it a little bit quieter, which it did do. However, it was not very durable, and I think the reason for that is it was a very light material. It, the five gallon bucket it came in was super light. Now, after this, I put a, two Sparco seats in it, a Sparco quick disconnect steering wheel, along with new carpet, the original center console, and the original dashboard, which I might change up this time. We're going to use Willwood brakes this time, and we're going to reuse that carbon fiber drive shaft. This time, we're also going to be reusing the STI crossmember, rear subframe, the white line uh, sway bar, lateral links, which are not pictured, and end links. I don't think we're going to reuse these wheels as I wasn't too fond of them. And we are going to be running stainless steel fuel lines front to back. However, this, the fuel system, we are going to change. I feel this was one of my mistakes. As I said, the engine bay cleaned up very nice, as you can see. And we are going to be running that AMR hard inlet, but I don't think I will powder coat the intake manifold white. Now, I had to have a custom set of headers made because the Killer Bees actually ran into the Mishimoto radiator. And we are going to be running 2000 cc injectors with E85. I'm not sure what turbo we're going to pick this time, so I am open to suggestions. But this is the car when it was just finished and we're going to make this one even better. Thanks again for joining me today, and I am going to start streaming this build to Twitch, so come and join me there, and check out my Instagram. But thank you again for coming, and I hope you're having a great day.